So then, Joe, today we're going to be looking at the industrial plug and socket mm -hmm. by Luden Palazzoli. Yes. The XCEE range. Yep. And it has a unique feature built into the actual socket itself. Absolutely. And I'll tell you about that feature. So we know this is a BSEN 60309 socket, often referred to as a industrial type socket, I mean, we know it's got other applications. Uh, but the key feature that's on here, and this is a world first actually, there is no other socket on the market that features this, is it has a rotating uh, switch there on the actual socket itself. So you can turn the socket on and off by rotating that there. And the really interesting thing, it's not just any switch. It's what's called an AC23 switch. And before we started shooting this video, we knew all about AC23 switches, didn't we? We were sort of world experts, really, in AC23 Absolutely. switches. Um, so we looked, did some research, <laughs> and it turns out that an AC23 switch is a switch that will disconnect what kind of loads, Gary? It will disconnect inductive loads. Yep. And if you think of these being used in factories and places like that, a yep. lot of the loads they're plugging in are inductive loads. Yeah, absolutely. So it allows us to insert both the plug and socket together, yep. and we haven't drawn any current, mm -hmm. okay, until we actually rotate in an anti-clockwise direction yep. the switch. Yep. And at that point, we start to draw the load. Yep. What's the advantage of not being able to plug in until you've actually activated the switch to draw the energy down. Yeah, the idea is that you can't uh, plug these in or disconnect them when the switch is operated. Right. So when that's on, yep. you can now no longer remove that out of there. That's firmly fixed in there. Because of course, if this is connected up to inductive loads particularly, you do get a lot of sparking and arcing when they disconnect, don't they? So we want to avoid that kind of thing going on. And also, just from a safety point of view, it's much better to switch something off before you pull the plug out like that. Absolutely. It's also got another feature that allows it to lock into position. Yep. This ring here, the yep. identifying colour ring as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got Luden Palazzoli Blue, yep. and often we're thinking every time we see blue, what voltage range are we looking at, Joe? Yeah, that tends to put us in the 230 volt range, doesn't it? But we've got here a slightly larger version. This is a three-phase version of exactly the same uh, range, the XCEE range, and it has all the same features uh, that we're about to discuss as the other socket. But really the key thing that's going on here is people sometimes look at this and think, well, we've got blue, yep. which triggers 230 in mind, 100%. and it's got red, which triggers 400 volts. Well, actually, this is just kind of the, the brand colour, isn't it? That Palazzoli blue that we, uh, we like so much. Um, and it's actually the cap and the ring that is the kind of defining colour that determines whether it's 230 or 400 volts. And by rotating the switch in an anti-clockwise direction or clockwise, whether you turn it on or off, yep. we disconnect all live conductors with that switching mechanism. Absolutely, yeah, it's a great bit of kit. When we go back and look at the actual pins themselves, yep. so whether we're looking at the ones within the socket or the plug, we can see that they're silver in colour, Joe, yeah. and not that standard brass looking. Yeah. What's the thinking behind changing those to that? Well, again, this is this is the interesting thing really about this plug and socket arrangement that we've been we've been looking at because when we first started, this, we were sort of like, well, how can we talk about a plug and socket and make that interesting? Because you just plug them together. What's to it? But actually, Luden Palazzoli have put an awful lot of thought into this. The example you've given already is the pins. Yeah. So normally you'd expect to see a brass pin. Here we've got a nickel coated brass. Pin. We have. And the idea behind that is that it actually kind of improves the connectivity of the block and socket arrangement because the nickel plating won't develop a surface patina like brass sometimes does, which can reduce the conductivity of the connection a little bit. So again, just another nice quality touch to a really good quality product. And as I look at one of the ones we've got on the set behind us, I've yep. just pulled this one out, yep. we can see we've got a little blue label on it. It's yep. slightly different than the ones we perhaps see out in industry where we actually got the, the plug and socket that yep. are blue identifying the voltage. So when I pull these apart, yep. yeah, well, you can see that they've got that brass pin. Brass. Yeah, yep. okay. The other thing I noticed that these are always IP44. Is yeah. that the same case with the Luden Palazzoli one? No, this is another really interesting thing about this, this, this range, the XCEE range, is the fact that these are IP 66. Brilliant. 67. Okay. The plug here is 68. Okay. And it's also IP 69 oh, right. as wow. well, which is pretty impressive. So we've got a whole range of ratings there going on. So that's quite interesting. Had you heard of IP 69 before today? We've done a little bit of research. <laughs> uh, um, no, I hadn't. I certainly hadn't ever seen it on the arrangement of industrial plug and socket. We've always gone for IP 44. We're saying splashes of water. Yeah. I think when we're getting up to the nine, can you just explain what protection that's got? Yeah, so IP69 relates to, we go back to jets of water, we do. essentially, but now we're talking about high pressure jets, 
that are high temperature also. So there's kind of a, a, an added kind of factor that comes into this then, which makes this even more IP rated than perhaps what we've seen before. When we look at the socket arrangement, yep. uh, this one is IP66, IP67 and IP69. Okay. So again, a really, really good quality, high rating, uh, high IP rating bit of kit that's suitable for, for all kinds of different applications. And that's a really big step up from IP44. Yeah, massively, absolutely, yeah. And to incorporate that IP rating, we can see things like these gaskets, can't we, that yep. are inside the actual um, plug itself. Yep. And I've had a little pull on these. I can't seem to get those I'll off. Get that out. No, absolutely yeah. not. It almost looks like that, that is molded into that and stuck in there. Not with adhesive, I think that's actually permanently molded as part of the fitting itself. So I think uh, perhaps when we go out to Luz and Palazzoli out there in Italy, yeah. we'll have a little look at the, the manufacturing process behind that because again, that's helping to maintain that really high IP rate. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to see it from early stages of manufacture all the way through Absolutely. to obviously the end bit and maybe we could even look at Perhaps they can do the IP rating and we can discover some more information yeah. about that. They've got a lab out there, so it'd be interesting to get in there. Interesting to break one down and look at the actual connections within it, Joe. Yeah, so absolutely. is that something we can do next? Yeah, let's do that. So we'll sort of work from the outside in. So at the back here, you can see we've got our cord grip and we've got a really good quality cord grip there. Uh, that's going to make sure that the IP rating is maintained and also that the cable can't be pulled out. So there's no clamp within it, the actual usual no. clamping process. This is really easy. We pass the cable through and we just tie it off. Absolutely. It's and there's your, your cable retention and your seal in there as well. And what's quite interesting as well, I wasn't sure what was going on with these kind of slots here, yep. but that's so that you can actually tighten that up with a spanner, should ah, you need right, to. Okay. So you can get that really nice and tight on there. Now, to get inside it, Gary, we've got another clever little function going on here. So you see here we've got this uh, this locking mechanism. Yep. And all you've got to do to get that out is just simply put your screwdriver in, give it a twist. So you don't want to pull on that, you no. just want to give it a twist. And what that does is it then unlocks the screwing mechanism so you can remove that. So it's just, a, I think it's almost like a quarter turn to get that off. And we can see now we've got cage termination. So we're not got just the screwing ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially on braided cables. Yeah. yeah, very fine strands of copper yeah. can actually go in and, and, and sort of start the damaging process because we've actually got the clamp. Yeah. Uh, we've got a cage mechanism will clamp onto the conductors yeah, itself. Yeah, so that, that treats the conductors, it grips them, but treats them kindly, doesn't it? Which we, we think is a really nice touch as well. So then, Joe, can you go through some of the applications for this industrial plug and socket for me from London? Absolutely. It's interesting you just called it an industrial plug and socket because yeah. that's most people's immediate thought, isn't it? So we know this would be great in an industrial environment, maybe in a manufacturing facility, some kind of factory, something like that, where it can expect a bit of rough treatment, maybe some uh, humidity, some moisture in the air, things like that. But also, there's so many different applications for it as well. We might see this being used on construction sites. It's very rugged and robust. We might see it in use there. Uh, also, maybe caravan sites and caravan parks, we might see them in use there, both for static caravans and also for touring caravans. We know that there's, you know, they're special locations, so we've got some serious uh, considerations there that that's going to help us to meet as well. We might also think about places like farms, maybe agricultural areas, horticultural areas. There really is an endless list of things that we could use this for. And when we summarise all those key points about yeah. it, you can see how this is a leap forward from our yeah. standard industrial plug and socket. Absolutely. So we know first of all, IP rating only at 44. Yeah. We've got a higher IP rating here. Yeah. We know the pins are now nickeled, yep. so in order that we don't get the platinum, we get a better electrical connection. Definitely. Can you remind me about the switch mechanism, Joe? Absolutely. So in the uh, socket part, we've got the AC23 switch, a world first on this type of uh, plug-in socket arrangement, which we know is really good because not only is it great for disconnecting inductive loads like motors and things like that, it also won't allow you to connect and disconnect while the circuit is live. And we know really ourselves helpful. on site, we've done that many times and yeah, that's not a good not or safe thing practice. Do, no. Ergonomically, when we've got these in our hands, one yeah. thing we haven't stressed is it's fantastic, it's a yeah. lovely feel to yeah, it and you wouldn't absolutely. believe that an industrial plug and socket could offer that. No. We've got the wonderful cord grip at the back, mm -hmm. no fighting around looking for a screw you might have taken out in yeah. order to pin the flex into place. So we've got that feature inside the termination, just remind me. Inside, we've got the cage terminations rather than just the screw terminations, so there's no damage to the cables or the conductors, which is obviously over tightening is a real problem in those situations, so that helps us to mitigate that problem. And also, we quite like on the inside of the lid gas. Yeah, these gaskets, yeah. pre we believe, pre-moulded actually onto the top itself, yeah. and something I think we should follow through, Joe. Absolutely. So I think we should look at these in greater detail from a manufacturing's point of view. Yep, if we could get out to Italy. <laughs> 
we'll go to the Palo Loli factory and we'll actually be able to see the XCEE range being manufactured. And I think that that is going to make for a really interesting video.